again. Welcome, my master's and PhD students, to the publication uh, methodology workshop today. This is our first workshop of this spring uh, term. I'm going to repeat this workshop at 2 p.m. San Diego time this afternoon. Today's workshop, we are focusing only on the 600 to 900 word articles, which I like to refer to as blog articles. Um, and that focus will be showing you in the uh, Lexis Web Course Blackboard where to find the materials that tell you how to set up your topic for the uh, blog article, how to, to communicate with me about your topic on your blog article, like don't send me email, we're going to use the discussion forum. And then finally, I'm going to show you some outcomes, the third thing, for the good blog articles, for the good articles, uh, of where, they, uh, where you can publish them. As examples, there are many places, of course. So now let's move on to our first point of discussion. What is this 600 to 900 word article? In order to uh, discuss this, I'm going to do a share screen here on the Google Plus. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be looking over my shoulder. I wouldn't normally do this in the uh, classroom, but I'm looking at the YouTube output of this course so I can see if you see what I see. I can also see the YouTube comments. So if you prefer to ask a question in the YouTube uh, comment area, that's fine. I can see it as just as I can see the group chat uh, area here within the classroom. Now I think when I click share screen, it's going to uh, it's going to make the uh, group chat to go away, but uh, well, find out. Full screen, Google Hangouts, publication workshop. I'm going to choose the publication workshop screen and see if that allows me to change my tabs at the top. I think it's going to. It does. So now I'm going to uh, actually enlarge my uh, YouTube screen so I can make sure that I have a full view. Um, on the On the screen I'm looking at right now, I've opened up our LexisNexis Web Courses course for the publication methodology and research practicum. Now, in this course, we, uh, we blend students who are in their first cohort students from their, uh, who are continuing past the first term into their second, third, fourth, whatever, how many years you're doing the program, most people over two years, I think, and also our doctoral students. Um, there are different aspects to be gained for all three groups, the initial starters, the people within their master's program, and finally the people within their doctoral program. Now, we just started our spring semester, we're in our third week, but uh, for the publication methodology course, this is our beginning, and uh, so your announcement's on the screen, the announcement announcing today's uh, practice office hours using the Google uh, Hangouts Plus. Within the courseware, the courseware being this web courses, Blackboard, that we need to look to be able to formulate this assignment two places. One, 
the link that reads publications on the left hand menu and number two our discussion forums link. So firstly I'm going to click on the publications link. In the publications link the first folder is titled National Underwriter Advanced Markets Library. Under that folder, so I'm going to have to click on the folder title, under that folder we're going to find the elements of this assignment. The first subfolder is called journal articles. Within journal articles are going to be many examples, I think 10, 10 different examples, totally different topic areas for you to consider when, uh, when scoping, when defining your topic. Now, you've already read your assignment. Um, announcement uh, and the assignment announcement to refresh your memory states that your article your blogticle will only be between 600 and 900 words long it will be at least 600 but no more than 900 for every word less than 600 minus a point for every word more than 900 minus a point in the assignment instructions it states your citations your footnotes your source citations do not count toward the word limit, so do not worry. You must include your source citation to avoid plagiarism and copyright violation, uh, but they do not count toward your word limit. But neither may you, as typical lawyers will do, especially with law review or academic writings, neither may you bury substance and content in the footnotes. So the footnotes may be citation to source, but they may not be content footnotes. I'm going to go ahead and click on the subfolder journal articles because it will give you uh, some context to see that for purposes of planning your topic, I don't mind if you plan out your topic within the discussion forum, we'll go there as a part two of this uh, little 40 minute discussion. I don't mind if you plan out, I'm going to cover the following topic, I'm going to do it in five parts, five articles, but you're only going to submit to me one article for this assignment. You may write article part two, part three, part four, because you want to publish those as a promotional piece, and in that context, is the third part of our discussion today. I'll show you where those outcomes may lie, where, you, where the publications may be placed if they are of sufficient publishable quality. Um, these article samples give you context of what a three-part article may look like. Um, now, you don't have to. Your article can be one piece and so on. I'm going to go ahead and click on article sample 6 and you'll see that it allows you to download a Word document. This one would be Independent Contractors Determined uh, Tax and Reporting. I'm not, I'm not going to download it today. I'm just... Uh, when you download the Word document You'll uh, you'll find that to publications you'll find that there is a style sheet which I mentioned. I'm going to highlight the area editorials. For the assignment, the completion of an editorial style sheet is required. So every article you download as a Word document also gives you a template and that template is the editorial style sheet 
So everything on the editorial style sheet, that's the page one, that doesn't count toward your word limit. But you must fill in the questions on the style sheet. They'll be your author's name, title, your 40-word abstract, how many words are in the substance of the article, and it says you're not allowed to include the title. The substance is what you're going to paste into a blog. Why the editorial style sheet? Well, one, for me, for grading, but that's not the actual purpose. Your editorial style sheet is what you would use professionally, whether you're just doing this for, to promote your firm. Let's say I'm working at Cooper's and Librand again, and I'm going to write a series of 10 articles on FATCA, F-A-T-C-A, this year. Five years from now, I need to be able to look back at those 10 articles when somebody questions me as to a source or copyright or just to remind myself um, where those articles came in, I need, to, uh, I, I need to look back and to look back I will look at the style sheet because looking at the article itself won't be sufficient. Um, I'm. I see. I have a video call coming in, and I don't know if that's going to block out of the classroom. So I'm not going to answer it. I, I, I think if you just click the link that was sent out in the email, it will automatically come into the. Uh, but I can try. I'll I'll click video call on this. Uh, Sorry, it's, it's Ronique trying to get in. So I'm going to click video call and see if it is going to put her into the classroom. No. Um, you're already in a video call. So, no. I think, Ronique, you have to click the link that I sent, and it will bring you into this uh, Google Hangouts um, live class. Okay. Now, the... So the editorial style sheets are important for you for compliance, mnemonic, remembering reasons years later about your articles. It also, when you do your style sheets, it makes your placement of those articles a lot easier because you're going to want to repurpose is the industry terminology. Repurposing means you're going to want to, uh, you're going to want to, uh, uh, place the same article, slightly rewritten perhaps, in five different blogs. So if I'm working Coopers and Librand, I may have my Coopers and Librand personal blog, I may have my Coopers and Librand uh, 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 firm blog, I may have it for a uh, specific industry area blog, uh, like FATCA, um, but then I may want to place it on the ABA, American Bar Association, uh, blog within LinkedIn for international law, by example, in the international tax sub uh, link, but I may also want to place it on the American Bankers Association blogs. I may want to put it into all kind of different public blogs or comments. And so now that I have an editorial style sheet, I have an abstract that I can just copy and paste from to put into the abstract window of those blogs, and I can take the content from the article itself and paste it in and then reword it slightly so that it doesn't appear to be the same article each time. And if I really want to enhance my search engine optimization, SEO, on that topic area within the editorial style sheet, I've included five or seven tags. By example, with FATCA, it may be FATCA, it may be FATCA written out, foreign, da da da. It may be IGA. It may be intergovernmental agreement written out. It may be IRS or compliance or what have you, these tags. And then I know what tags to include to help for the searching of my article, but also I link one article to another article or I use the same kind of. Um, by example, it may be my name. So obviously, I'm the author. I include a link to William Burns, and every time I include that link, the link goes back to my, in my Coopers and Librand example, my Coopers and Librand bio page, so that potential leads can reach out to me. 
Um, if I'm just marketing the services of the firm but not myself, then I'm going to link back to our uh, service page for FATCA, by example, so that a potential lead can reach out to our general inquiry um, line at, in that case, Cooper's Library and for FATCA. Now, that tells you about these example um, blogicles and so forth. I'm going to uh, now show you that on the moment underneath journal articles I'm going to highlight lectures on blogical recordings so you can copy and paste the lecture one lecture two onto your browser um, bar, address bar, into your browser address bar, and that will pull up pre-recorded uh, Blackboard Collaborate webinars um, previously uh, given on uh, getting into some of the substance of topics, blogicals, and so forth. Uh, if you want to uh, review those recordings, they're suggested. Number two of this 40-minute uh, uh, lecture today on the, on the articles, blogicals, the second part, we're going to look at the discussion forums wherein, so I'm going to click on discussion forums on the left-hand side of my screen. I'm going to point out in the discussion forums where you will place your topic suggestions and we'll have a discussion about it. So on my screen I am now looking at spring 2014 new student blog article assignment form. I'm not going to click on it because if I click on it it's going to show student names and I don't want to show your names without your permission because of FERPA. So just take my word that if I were to click on that link, that link would bring me into a, a chat forum, a discussion forum, where you can uh, input your topic by reply to my thread where it says input topic here. And you'll say, okay, uh, Prof Burns, I'm interested in, so yesterday somebody put in in fact, the first person jumped in yesterday, that's why there are five posts, and said, uh, I'd like to write on medical marijuana. So I replied in the deductibility, the tax deductibility of medical marijuana, which last year, or last term or two terms ago, a student did write on. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting topic right now. Thus, I replied back and said, you know, interesting topic. Uh, you may get some traction there but what would be a point of difference from what was written from the last term student is to consider the deductibility also at the state tax level, but you have to do that within 900 words, or you have to make part one and part two, and perhaps you don't get to part two. Maybe part two is the state tax deductibility, and you just mention it at the end of part one. Next time we'll talk about that. And then part two you write anyway, but it's not part of your assignment. Or you write part two and you don't write part one. That's okay. You submit part two, you write part one for promotional blog purposes, but you submit part two for the assignment. I don't care which. I just need you to write, I'm going in the spring forum, you would put, I'm going to make this into a two or three part uh, series. And in the two or three part series, I'm going to... Uh, um, in the two or three part series I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, include the uh, uh, you know I'm gonna submit part two so I see Ranique's trying to come into the call and click to join the video call so I'm going to click but I think again you're already in a video call so it doesn't 
I, I can't set up a separate call. You have to come into the uh, to this live uh, Google Hangouts Plus. Okay. Now, I'm just going to take a quick look at my YouTube screen. Um, I'm going to look to see if there's a link on the YouTube screen if somebody wanted to join. No. Okay. So we're going to move on to part three, which is the outcomes part. What happens if I write a publishable, high quality article um, for my last uh, 20 minutes? But I'm going to post the link under the YouTube for Renee, because I don't think you're coming into the right place. So I'm going to post the plus link into the YouTube forum as a comment. Share your thoughts. Sign in to post a comment. OK, sorry, I have to sign into it. And then. Uh, and then you can click the link I'm posting. I'm not sure you, you click the link on my email that I previously sent because that would take you into the uh, in the classroom. So I'm going to post the link into uh, paste. Let's see if it makes the link live. Post. Okay, so I have posted the Google Hangouts uh, Plus link on to the webinar uh, YouTube page. So you can go ahead and click that, Renee, and see if that uh, brings you to the right classroom. OK. <clears throat> now, before I move into part three, let me stop sharing my screen for a moment. And we'll come back. I just want to touch base and make sure that uh, uh, because I can't see chat when I'm in group chat. Oh, I think I can, actually. But anyway, I'm going to go into, I'm just going to click group chat. I think it stopped sharing my screen. And um, no, I'm not sure it does. Okay, now I've stopped, now I've stopped sharing my screen. <laughs> and, uh, and so now I'm just going to... Uh, See if you can group chat to me um, in the in the Google Hangout, and I'm looking at my YouTube screen to see how long it takes to flick back to my video that I'm projecting right now. And then we're going to go into part three, which is to look at outcomes of of uh, your great blog post you're going to write. Okay, so I see the video screens come back up. Um, too bad the chat didn't show up on the YouTube side, but I guess, I guess it just can't. Okay. Um, well, um, so now I'm going to uh, go back to share screen. And with the share screen, I'm going to uh, I'm going to um, go into one, two, three, th three example links of where your uh, great publishable quality articles uh, can be placed, and uh, the first screen we're going to look at is Advisor FYI, Advanced Market Intelligence for Advisor, for advisors. This site is owned by National Underwriter. Uh, feel free to explore it. These are all 600 to 900 word um, articles that have been uniquely written uh, for financial advisors. And uh, I'll just scroll down and you can see it. You hit older entry, older entry, older entry. 
or you could on the right hand side of the screen it started in August 2010 you could click on different months and uh, by example August 2010 and um, and uh, and review some of the older posts but You'll see in the older posts, by example, August 24th, 2010, there's an abstract that starts the article. Why is this topic important for financial professionals? Yada, yada, yada. You'll see the 900-word article, and then you'll see some internal links and so forth. So plenty of examples. Well, let's go to the current articles of April 2014. And the reason I'm showing you this is because Edward Nito, one of the very successful, um, he's not yet an alumni, but uh, I guess we'll be graduating at least in 2014, I think. Um, he uh, lives in Germany, uh, where he is counsel to various, uh, he was a, a military person and worked for go the uh, and then government contracting afterwards and so he's uh, and now he's counsel to government employees um, especially in light of their tax situation overseas so he wrote this article which he published in several places this is one of them um, last term called foreign housing allowance for United States government employees taxable and non-taxable and uh, uh, so this article was on the gross income of United States citizens and resident aliens is taxable on a worldwide basis. Yeah, da, da, da. And it goes into the foreign housing exclusion or deduction and so forth. I think, yeah, he wrote two different articles. So this is one of those articles. Um, I encourage the student, you don't have to do this, but I encourage the students to do uh, two things when publishing their articles. One is to put a picture because in a different lecture, I, I'll do it this afternoon at 2 p.m., I'll talk about branding and how you're going to use your articles through an editorial schedule to brand. So an editorial schedule may be planning articles over a six-month period of time, one a week. So in six months you have, uh, what, 54 divided by 2, so you have uh, 26 no, 28 weeks, 52 weeks a year, so 26 weeks. Um, 26, uh, 26 articles, so you, we'll go through different ways to plan that out, to schedule that out by do I take one topic a month, and, and so I do four or five articles on that one topic, or, or do I continue one theme through six months, or what have you. Every time you publish, you have to have your branding logo, and nothing speaks louder than your picture and you use the same picture every time or if you don't you have to have some attribute of the picture that's the same in his maybe it's a pink tie or whatever so but it has to be the same so that it's a mnemonic device that people see the picture and they and they actually over reading your articles for three or four months all of a sudden they become like they familiar with you oh I know Edward Nito I know him because I, I know his picture. I see his name. If I click on his name right now, open link a new tab, I'll do that. We're going to see it takes to his, uh, his LinkedIn page. And so now it gives the opportunity to reach out to him as a, uh, as a, um, as a reader. Also, moreover, at the end of this article, we're going to see that I have an ability to contact him, reach out to him by his email account. I have a little biography of him and the tags. So these tags are for search engine optimization. Uh, they allow this article to be found easier in searches when somebody is, by example, searching for foreign housing allowance or foreign housing deduction on Google. Um, foreign housing exclusion, yada yada. So you'll see the tags that he chose that he feels are the uh, highest order search tags. And then when he writes, by example, 
10 other articles in this area, placing them one a week for 10 weeks, he would repeat most of these tags, um, if not all of these tags and only these tags to create not just a branding with his picture, contact details, bio, but a tag branding for Google search purposes. I scroll down. We see Dr. George Mintz article. Um, Dr. Mintz teaches in this program. He's also uh, chair, uh, CEO, or no, president of the uh, American Academy of Financial Management. Um, so now we're in April. So let's go to um, to the main page, and then we're going to look at previous articles. So that's April. Okay. So here, let's look at the February 13th article. That's uh, George, Dr. Mintz. Conflict of interest, sole interest or best interest? Roland Ortiz. So um, Roland, another highly successful um, candidate, uh, soon to be graduate, maybe just graduated, uh, of the program, um, wrote two different articles, I think, that he published. One was on conflict of interest, sole interest versus best interest. And um, uh, so for this article, uh, again, his name will link over to uh, his LinkedIn page so I can, uh, so you can see him. He can be reached out to. Um, we scroll down. We find a bio. Uh, he wants people to reach out to his LinkedIn page to find him there in his tags. So this is his area of professional interests um, that he advises upon. As you see, he's fixed income trading, derivative trading, securities trader, and portfolio valuations. Okay, I'm not going to show you any more on Advisor FYI, but I think you get the point. Um, I will then take your article and double post it on my blog and so off my head, I uh, um, maybe if I do wealth management, I would find uh, Roland's article, I bet, um, or Trust. But uh, now when I double, let's see. Okay, perfect. There's a different uh, Roland Ortiz article, Trustees Investment Strategy, Prudent Investor Rule, and Legal List. Um, so this article links over. It's just enough information here, abstract, his abstract, to, for SEO purposes, that this article will appear in a link if his tags are searched, because I've included his tags in the, uh, uh, in the, um, input box, then it clicks back to the advisor thing. Now, I could have reposted this article in the blog area, but change the wording around. But I didn't want to change his wording for him. But So Roland would change his own wording, and Roland may then post it in different areas. So by example, now I pull up Lexus. Um, so you could do a more substantive article. So you take your 900 word article and you make it more like 1200 to 1500 words and it would be length appropriate for the Lexus um, area. So this is, I just put my own stuff up here, but this is a, uh, well I could show you a Brazilian students actually. So I think if I search my name, I'll find uh, something on the World Cup since the World Cup is coming up in Brazil. Contentious issues of the Brazilian World Cup law. So this is by uh, Patrice uh, Baricelli, uh, who's an attorney at the San Paulo Bar Association. Uh, she's really uh, a, general, a counsel attorney for uh, one of the major banks in Brazil, actually. And uh, but she wanted to write on World Cup law. Her actual area of practice is totally different. It's very interesting. 
Uh, she's a she's a uh, attorney for a major bank in a very niche financial area, and uh, uh, on financial advising um, for inevitably it comes out for consumers, but she's on the institutional side, basically product development. Um, but like all Brazilians, she's interested in the World Cup, and so she decided to explore um, various legal issues involved with the Brazilian World Cup Association uh, Football League uh, and the Brazilian government interacting with FIFA which is the trade organization of, of um, soccer football worldwide. I, I'm not a big soccer football fan other than my wife's Brazilian so of course I watch the games but um, I can tell you a lot about rugby but not so much about football. Um, but her article here are about the challenges of taking what FIFA requires of national uh, governments to put in their regulation or to have for uh, like vending. Like they want to be able to sell beer in stadiums so that they can either have sponsors who are beer companies who pay them tens of millions of dollars to sponsor the World Cup or that they can make royalties on the beer sales or, or what have you. Um, kind of entertainment law issues, sports law and entertainment law. Um, but local law, be it state law, municipal law, or federal law, may state by example, we don't allow al alcohol sales, we don't even allow alcohol in stadiums because we don't want people getting drunk and fighting. Or driving home, it's, it's to protect the safety so that people don't get drunk and then get in their car and drive afterwards and, uh, and run off the road. Um, there could be safety reasons, uh, or it could be uh, you know, so they don't fight, I guess it's kind of safety or public, I don't know what you'd call it, but anyway, um, it, it could be religious, eh? we don't allow drinking on Sundays or, or what have you. Um, so they have this challenge, or they, this was a real situation as you would read if you, if you went through this article. And then, so there's a challenge, and then she had a follow-up article, and, you know, what did they do? How did they work this out? And, 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 and so on. Um, okay. So that's a, a different area. So you could publish, by example, on Advisor FYI. I will copy it onto several blog areas. You could put it into um, Lexis. But, of course, and I'll end the discussion in the last three minutes with opening up LinkedIn. Besides your own blog... You could go into your different LinkedIn groups. So I'll, you know, I, I write a lot on FATCA, F-A-T-C-A, right now because it's obviously a very uh, salient issue. Everybody's uh, panicking since uh, May second technically was the deadline for registration. Okay, that's a soft deadline. There's, um, but, but within the different groups. Um, you could post your links to your articles or post your articles rewritten. Um, and why do you do this? Because I mentioned branding, but part of your branding is to develop yourself as a thought leader. Thought le leader. So now I'm not selling anything because I, I'm not, I can't practice. I'm obviously a full-time uh, academic, professor, associate dean. Um, ABA rules don't allow me to practice, so I'm not selling product. I guess I could sell books, um, books that I'm uh, author on. But, um, but uh, so for me, I I don't care if people call me a journalist. Um, in, in fact, I, I am a member of the National Press Club of Washington D.C. as a journalist. I've been inducted as a journalist. That's fine. But you don't want to be a journalist. Um, you want to be known as a thought leader. That is a magic buzzword. And thought leaders are what you want your attorney to be, what you want your accountant to be, what you want your financial planner to be, what you want your investment advisor to be, your asset manager, a thought leader. You want somebody who's, who's uh, cutting edge but risk, generally risk averse or risk managing, compliant and so forth. Um, a journalist more somebody who's not an expert but who writes about what experts do, isn't it? Um, uh, we don't expect our Wall Street Journal person to be an investment banker. We expect them to write about investment bankers. Um, you don't want to be that person. You want to be the thought leader. You want to be the person they're writing about. But 
to do you're creating uh, articles using your analysis you're not just describing a situation you're putting your two cents your spin your thinking like an attorney like an accountant like a financial planner and yada yada your magic into the article so that your secret sauce blends and then it becomes your recipe and that recipe over a editorial schedule becomes your brand so that people say oh William Burns he's a FACA thought leader and uh, he's not just a FACA journalist he's not just telling me what's going on but he's providing me a spin an analysis not punditry but an analysis that I find useful in my own thinking about this subject especially as a lawyer for compliance as an accountant for compliance uh, filling in the right form uh, for and so on um, so thought leadership uh, so I go into my different many groups that I'm a member of and I change them out so I might be a member one month and then switch it out like for a different one so maybe I'm Brazil one month and then I'm India the next month and I'm in the China the following month and uh, and I'm going to place within so let's go look at uh, American Academy a financial management group and uh, and I'll go into that and I might place um, into the uh, discussion board uh, my articles and uh, for comments and so forth uh, and that gets readers and then over time you build up um, like me I think I have uh, what 3,000 people have connected with me on LinkedIn almost 2,000 something um, what is it 2,779 people so I've never connected I don't connect with people on LinkedIn I let them connect with me because part of it's to show me the effectiveness of my thought leadership I'm gonna stop showing my screen now um, but part of it's to show the effect you know, and, and so I allow people to connect with me so I have to put my email into LinkedIn to allow them uh, easy connection but that's the process and uh, okay we've reached 11 o'clock so uh, that's the 40 minutes of this lecture we covered three things number one we covered uh, the assignment itself uh, designing your article and I gave you the uh, in the classroom the web courses blackboard classroom of Lexus where you will find those example articles and editorial style sheet number two um, we looked at the discussion forum where you're going to input your topic area uh, so that we can have a discussion on it asynchronously only there do not send me an email if you send me an email about your topic I will ignore it um, it's because it's not fair to the other students to have a, a side chat discussion with me it, the only way to be transparent so that all students see the topics extensions in particular or special requests or whatever the only way for transparency is that it's all kept in the discussion forum and then all students see what all other students and my responses and so forth um, and then finally uh, we looked at outcomes. What happens when you do the high quality, publishable quality article? Where are some of the places it gets placed? I gave you just three or four examples, but there are literally a hundred examples, and it depends on what area you're in. So if you're in tax, you know, one set of placements, articles, articles. If you're in wealth management, maybe half our students are in the field of wealth management uh, through the American Academy or what have you. And those students are going to be interested in uh, producersweb.com. They're going to be interested in placement under Think Advisor, which has a million reads a month, or um, lifehealthpro.com. Uh, whereas the tax people may be interested in like the international tax uh, blogicle of the American Bar Association, or for the accountants of the AICP, and so forth. Um, the anti-money laundering people are obviously going to be interested in, in a totally different set of, uh, of placements. Okay, 